Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Ross's Corner. I know that it's been a little longer than usual between shows, but I've been rather swamped at work, so I do apologize. What we're going to look at today, with 45 days to go to the race, is the concept of doing interval training. Now I've spoken about this in previous shows, and I think it's really important because interval training is designed to help teach your body how to run faster, it teaches you how to judge pace, it teaches you how to tolerate the discomfort that is inevitable in a race like two oceans. And so, Regardless of your level, of your target performance, of your experience in racing, I do think that interval training will be extremely valuable for you. So I'm going to give you a short overview of what it takes to do interval training and explain how to get the most out of those sessions. So what we mean by interval training is that instead of doing your 40 minute continuous run, what you would do is break it up into segments of running which we'll call sets and segments of walking which are the rest periods shown here in blue. So what you're looking at here is five sets of five minutes with three minutes walk in between. The important thing about this is that by having rest intervals you can train faster than race pace and this improves your speed and a whole host of other physiological adaptations which make you a better runner at the shorter and eventually longer distances. So let's look at a specific example. This is a 21 kilometer runner with a 10 kilometer PB of 51 minutes and they'd like to crack 50. So a nice interval session for them would be to go out and do six sets of one kilometer at faster than their target pace. In this example, I've said 445 and to take three minutes rest in between. This way they're learning what it feels like to run at 440, 450 a K, but the rest period in between allows them to complete the session and get the training stimulus that will hopefully help them track that 50 minute barrier. Now one of the cool things about intervals is that you can actually get quite creative and play around with the rest, the pace and the distances and in doing that you can change the stimulus and the focus of the session. So here's an example of a 21k runner with a best of 2 hours and a 10k best of 52 minutes. They could go out and do a really nice speed endurance session by doing 4 sets of 2 kilometers at faster than their 10k pace and what you'll see here is that the fairly short rest of 2 minutes 30 combined with a total distance of 8 gives them a really nice speed endurance session. You can take quite a similar session in the same runner and turn it into a speed session simply by cutting the number of sets from 4 down to 3 and then because they're only doing 6 kilometers in total they can afford to go faster so here I've shown that they can run it at close to 5 kilometer pace which I've said is 4 minutes 30 per kilometer but because the speed is higher, the rest period in between needs to increase. So I've allowed for four minutes rest. This becomes a really nice speed session for that athlete. And then finally, you can go the other extreme and turn it into a strength endurance session by increasing the number of sets to six. The total distance is now 12 kilometers, but you run them slower than 10 kilometer pace at around 5.25 per k. However, you take a much shorter rest of only one minute 30 walk in between and you have a really nice strength session for the ultra and the endurance athlete. And then finally here are four other examples of interval training sessions that you can do in addition to what I've already shown you. You can play around with a number of sets, the distance run per set, the pace that you run them at and also the recovery. The other thing you can do of course is to change the activity during the recovery from a walk to a jog. What that does is it makes the session a lot tougher because instead of having a two or three minute walk you actually have to jog at a much slower than normal speed. Finally you can do these sessions on the hills which is a really nice uh, adaptation for oceans and you can also use perceived exertion instead of pace so you can do them at for example 10 kilometer race tempo rather than race pace. I think the key with interval training is that you must familiarize yourself and learn how to judge the pace and the intensity of the session. The most important guideline that I can give you is that the final set should always be run faster than the previous one. So for example, if you've done a session of say six times one kilometer at your 10k pace, you should be able to finish that sixth one kilometer rep faster than the previous five. If you find that you can't and that you slow down or you fail to finish the session, then it's important that you drop the intensity, you drop the number of sets or you increase the rest. You have to do what it takes so that you can finish the session feeling comfortable and strong. Another word of caution is that because you're running faster than you're accustomed to, there is a risk of injury doing interval training. And so don't go straight in and do 12 400s or 8 1 kilometers. Rather start with half the number and then go to 3 quarters the number and then build it up. You have 7 weeks to go. Use the first 2 weeks now 
to teach yourself how to do interval training, and then you will see the benefits later on. Next week, we'll continue towards oceans with some more training tips, so do join me then. Until then, good luck with those intervals.